Hey, good morning, everybody. Sarasota Tim. Just crawling out of the bed. My coffee was already uh, prepared this morning. I just pushed the button. I got a good one for you today, folks. I've been thinking about all this. And, uh, you know, when I start to thinking, look out. <laughs> so today's going to be kind of an adventure. I thought, you know, there was a reason God had me buy that little portable grill. Let, let's talk about the grill for a minute. Seems to fascinate everybody. <laughs> wow. I've had a few grills. I, uh, I bought the Expert Grill, made some videos. People enjoyed the videos of the grilling. There will be a lot more of those, too. Believe me. Um, I thought I was going to move and leave Teddy's. So, I, I'm in my nighty shirt. I haven't done my eye drops yet. I come out here, it was so nice. The fireplace, it's, uh, I don't know, like 55. A little chill, but not freezing out there. But inside the camper, it feels a little chilly. So, I, uh, where can I put you guys? Where I can see and talk to you for a minute. Here we go. Let's talk. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I got to get my eye drops in. I, uh, that was the first sip. So bear with me. But you're going to see me start to be wound up here in a minute. Um, I bought the grill, and I thought, $35. I've had a lot of those little, oh, I was going to tell you about the grills. I had a lot of those little grills. I'll get to that in a second. I bought the big expert grill. I made the videos. You guys enjoyed them. <clears throat> I was doing a lot of them when I had the wolf pup all the time. I had one guy. He doesn't follow me anymore. I don't hear from him. Uh, the pizza man, he... He never even commented until I video uh, grilled. He just loved the barbecuing uh, videos. He was all about that. I do missing, miss. I do missing. I do miss uh, getting out there and barbecuing a burger, or a steak, <clears throat> vegetables in the tin foil, and all the things we used to do. And let me back up. Let me. Hang on, folks. Where's my eye drops? Where, where's everything? <laughs> it is early. I mean, it's only five, it's already five o'clock. I'm gonna tell you about my day. Today's a traveling day. We're gonna be on the road. I'm gonna hit Bucky's. I might do a, a tailgate grill barbecue at Bucky's. All right, Baker, go back. You're losing everybody. Too early in the morning. I bought a grill. I grilled. I call it grilling instead of barbecuing. I grill out. I had somebody tell me one time, it's called barbecuing. Why do you say grilled out? We're grilling out. I always said we're grilling out. Anyway, I sold that grill for what I paid for it because I was going to leave um, Teddy's. I was going to move. Barbecue grills sell like that. I don't know why. They sell fast. Um, I sold it within $10 of what I gave for it. And then uh, I didn't move. And now you remember I bought another grill. Same grill. It wasn't assembled. Uh, the first one was assembled. I threw it in the... Uh, I think I had the Forerunner at the time. I did. I jammed it in there, brought it home, and then I sold it. <clears throat> and if you're going to move, you don't want to carry around a big grill in the back of your truck or something because you got other stuff you got to take, and that's not part of it. But um, I got another one that was had to be assembled, and Miss Jolene helped me put that together in the rain. We moved it into the shop. And we had to do it under lights, and we got it together. 
and that was that was fun. That was good. We put it together good. All the nuts and bolts, every last one was used. We put it together perfectly. Then I took the big trip to uh, to Georgia and the Carolinas, as you remember, in October, and I thought. I am not returning. I am going to be uh, moving. Or I thought when I got back, uh, I had the new camper, the, the Flagstaff here, and <clears throat> Tim One moved out, and I'm in there, so there's room for my slide outs, and uh, there wasn't room for both of us in there. And we made the adjustments. He went around the corner. Uh, to a good friend's place. I came back to Teddy's, and then that's what it was. I decided I want to travel, and I don't want to be here anymore. I got this brand new camper that I've got squoze in here in this little spot, nice spot, but very difficult to get in and out if I want to just do something on the weekends or start traveling like I'm going to do. So I moved, and when I got ready to move, I started, uh, do I use you? And get rid of everything. So I sold another grill like that. Grill number two, gone. Uh, that one I might have lost 10, 20 bucks on, maybe? Not much. So I had two, exactly, three burner expert grills from Walmart. And uh, took good care of them, they were very clean. And when I went to buy a third one here the other day, I looked online, just like somebody did that bought mine. <clears throat> I looked on Craigslist. I looked on Marketplace. And I wouldn't put a hamburger on a grill that what I looked at, they looked disgusting. And I didn't want to go into all this cleaning and filing and brushing and whatever it took to make them things, you know, sanitary again. So, uh... I started looking at Walmart online, and I sure enough found the same grill for $96, even lower. I think the first one was $109, and this one was only $96, like clearance. You know, I guess we're not in the season quite yet. So, one Walmart didn't have them. The one over in McClinney, I guess that's how you say the name of the town, did. So, I go over there. You saw the video. I'm all about it. Let's put it already assembled. I don't want to assemble anymore. But you can't believe a damn thing I say. Because now i got a little one that I have to assemble. <laughs> but you know how easy it is? Very. <clears throat> now i got this, this idea, $35. Now I've had three of those, four of them maybe, in my life. And I have used the heck out of them. I mean, they can cook it up. They're just like a big gas grill but a smaller cooking surface. It has the little screw-on propane bottle, or you can hook with a hose, and I have that attachment, right to my propane in the front of the camper, or a separate 20-pound. Uh, 20, 20 pound. A lady got on to me yesterday about calling my propane bottles 30-gallon and 20-gallon. They're not gallons. She says they're pounds. Okay, so I got a 30-pound bottle outside here that I adopted, full of propane, that's not attached to the two other 30-pound propanes uh, that I have in the front. So I'm just going to move that around to the side over here, put the grill on top of a table. I'm going to get a little uh, metal pan, I guess, at Dollar Tree, so that the grease can uh, fall down. I don't know what catches the grease on the bottom of those. I'm trying to remember. But I watched a video yesterday that was made three years ago of the same grill, and the guy put it together. He already had it together. He took it apart in fast speed and then reassembled it. And it's all in my head. I can open this box now and throw the instructions away and take out my little electric screwdriver, which is a real time saver. And I'll zip, zip, zip. I'll put that thing together. And I'll burn off the paint for like a good 15 minutes. Um, and I'll have that thing seasoned, ready to go. Now that's weird. I got the heat on so hot 
that the air conditioning came on. <laughs> All right, time to shut the heat down. Shut it down. All right. What was I saying before I was so rudely interrupted? So I got that one for $35 after I was going to buy another expert three-burner grill that was already assembled. I could put it right in the back of a pickup truck. I don't have a forerunner. I got tie-down straps. I could have brought that baby right on home and been cooking it up. But I got a great idea, and you guys are going to love it. That little expert grill, it's also an expert grill, portable unit with the handle. You can fold the, the legs up on it that holds the lid on it. It's so cool. Uh, I will buy some of those little bottles because when I go portable, when I go portable on you guys, I'm not going to be able to carry my big 30 pound propane tank, nor unless I pick up a 20 pounder, I have a, 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 a milk crate in the back of the truck they sit in. I'm looking for one of those right now on Facebook Market. I might pick one of those up. But otherwise, I'll pick up some of those little cylinder bottles. And what my idea is, go to Dollar Tree, get a little pan that goes on the bottom to catch the grease. Set that baby right on the tailgate of the crusher. And put my tripod up. And go to the beach, go to the park, go to a rest area. I've got my Dometic fridge behind the uh, the seat in the back of my Crew Max Crusher Tundra that plugs into a cigarette lighter. And when I'm not running the engine, I don't even have to carry one of those big uh, portable uh, power stations. I've got a 330 watt, the EBL that was sent to me with a charger and a 100 watt solar panel to recharge it. And a propane-powered generator in the back of my truck to charge this baby back up. Anyway, <laughs> what I'm trying to get at is I'm going to take a road trip today back down to West Palm, see the doctor tomorrow. I'm going to very likely the next day go to the RV show in West Palm. And wherever I go, I'm going to have a refrigerator, a stove, you know, a grill, food in the refrigerator, drink, a generator to resupply my power, a passenger seat that I'm going to <whistles> down with some uh, bed clothes, and I'm going to be car camping for a night, maybe two. I stay down there, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna have fun. We're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna go car camping, traveling, barbecuing, and uh, throwing stuff in the Dometic fridge. It's behind the seat. And it's gonna be fun. I'm so excited about it. I woke up this morning. It just hit me this morning. It just hit me when I made this coffee that the grill is sitting in the front seat in the box. So those of you taking wagers on me returning it. Uh, I hope you're not betting that I will, because it's not going to happen. I'm going to build that sucker, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to be cooking out on it. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have some fun. And this morning, I'm going to pack up some clothes. Uh, the weather's going to be stellar. Uh, it's going to be great here in Jacksonville. It's really kind of a bummer to leave. It's going to be 60, 65 degrees, like noon, sunny. Next two days are sunny, I think, here and West Palm. There's going to be about 75, which is really hard to take, right? <laughs> it's going to be great, man. It's going to be great. Mm. I'm going to make another one of those. So, it's, it's five. I'm probably going to leave here no later than noon today, probably earlier. So, i got plenty of time. Oh, oh, <laughs> I got to tell you the crescendo. The EUY high-speed bitchin' e-bike that I just received that uh, is sitting right outside. It's actually over here at my neighbor's under his shed. 
He's so nice. He said, it's not bothering anything. Leave it there. I have it locked up and everything right out here, but my, my awning is not out. I'm not going to leave my awning out while I'm away and the wind come and all that. So, uh, Mr. Tom next door is uh, generous enough to say you can leave it right here. In fact, when I got back this last trip t two days ago, I told him I'm, I'm going to be going back down for my follow-up appointment on my eye. He goes, it's not hurting anything. You want to leave it right here? You can. But I might, I think I should, grab it, toss it in the back of the, uh, there's no chance of rain really, uh, in the back of the crusher. And uh, when I'm not grilling and chilling, and I got my beach chair, I got a camp chair actually, uh, down there where I'm going to park somewhere and uh, have my, uh, my barbecues, maybe at the inlet or something, or one of those parks at John Prince or Del Rey or Lake Worth or up in Jupiter at Dubois. Oh, that sounds fun. You guys remember my video at Dubois Park up in Jupiter Inlet? That place is really cool, especially on weekend. Now, there we go. And that's a great place to ride the bike. I got my little camera holder that I took off the e-scooter that I sold to Miss Janine. I know Miss Janine's watching. Good morning, Miss Janine. Hope you're enjoying the scooter. And uh, wasn't she a sweet lady? And I'll put the little phone holder on there, and we'll ride her around. We'll get some videos. What a life! I love it. I love it. I'm so excited. And then I woke up this morning twice. I drank a bunch of water last night. I had to go tinkle. And every time I get up, it just hits me like, <clears throat> Baker, look what you're in. Look what you have. I'm boasting right now because I'm excited. It's brand new. Everything works. And... The car camping thing is like I was talking about. Once I start to pull this and travel and go west, so I have a home base somewhere. I can leave it somewhere and then do the same thing I'm going to practice and rehearse with for the next couple of days with the crusher, the bike, the grill, and sleeping in the cab. Don't forget, folks, when I had my Toyota 4Runner and I did car camping and I had a little uh, trifold mattress in the back, you can idle your engine if there's bugs, if it's raining, if it's hot. You simply let that motor run. As long as your cooling system is operative, there is absolutely no danger, no harm whatsoever in idling your engine um, overnight. I just put the air conditioning on the lowest setting, uh, lowest fan setting, and, you know, when the sun goes down in 10 minutes, that's going to be cool in there, very comfortable. And I've done it several times with my Forerunner when I was out in Utah and traveling to Utah through the uh, Louisiana states and other were, other uh, truck stops that I would stop at where it would be hot and humid. Last thing you want to do is try to lay down back there and you know mosquitoes coming in, bugs from the lights of the truck stop and all that. No, no, no. Roll the windows up. Now, I had those window shades for the 4Runner that went in all eight windows, so I was totally private in there. And I should get that kit uh, for the Crusher, but the windows are so dark, I just might want one. I can pick that up at Walmart maybe today for the front windshield, uh, just so when I'm laying in the seat, you know. I'll have the mind changer right next to me. Don't come a-knocking. <laughs> so... <clears throat> Life is good, folks. Retired life, single life, sober life. The uh, alarm went off and stopped the video uh, telling me to turn my hot water heater off. I use the electric hot water heater. I have both uh, propane and electric. I really got to put my eye drops in. But I was going to tell you guys... <clears throat> um, I'm going to make another cup of coffee. And uh, thanks for telling me about shaking the eye drops. Very true. Pink ones go in first. 
And then the blue, this is the pressure medicine in the right eye. And actually, I don't use that one until at night. That's once a day. So we'll put that right over there. Make sure I take those with me, of course. But we wanted to go ahead. This is twice a day in the right eye. This is for pressure for my good eye. These are every two hours forever. And these are four times a day in the same left operative eye, operated eye. So I'll be doing those. But you got to wait 10 or 15 minutes after you put the pink ones in. So let that work a little bit. But we'll go ahead and do the right eye with the blue, then make some coffee. Like I say, I'm an expert. Believe me, that's all inside my eye. I am an expert eye dropper. Now, we're going to grind some coffee this morning. I got trash to take out. Uh-oh. <laughs> that's from going down in my sinus. Excuse me. Dab the eyes. Blow the nose. We don't have it around here, folks. I'm looking for a new woman. How do you like me so far? <laughs> hey, get used to it. Because us, you ladies out there have got to, got to deal with all the The idiosyncrasies that men have. I will edit all that out. You can't believe a damn thing I say. <clears throat> all right. We're back. His eyes all blown out from sneezing. The, uh, the, the coffee here. Oh, the whole place is going to smell like it now. Oh, already. Believe me. It just comes right out of there. Look at this. Woo, that'll open up your sinuses. Man, that smells good. Thank you, Miss Deb. Wow. That's some good stuff. All right. We're going to put in some coffee. One. Two. Ah, three, a little, little to grow on. Listen how quiet this is. It's not annoying. Yeah, shake it around a little bit. It's already all ground up. Oh, that's good. I'll blow my nose again. All the ladies that were interested in me have now said, Next. <laughs> what else you got? <clears throat> Running low on paper towels. But the cutest thing in the world with, look at here. With this wireless charger that you just lay the phone right on here. And it starts to charge. Just like I've got a, a wireless charger right here. Because I have the best theater uh, seat with the little wide part there in the middle. It's got um, a light. And in the cab, you can do that. It's got USB. And then down here, right up here at the top... There's a, uh, right there, there's a USB right up here. Let me turn it on. I charged it up yesterday. It's 100% power. There's a little USB-C. Then you have a DC cigarette lighter. And this is what I put the uh, DC uh, cigarette lighter uh, Dometic refrigerator I have in the truck. I just plug that into here. That refrigerator only takes 50 or 55 watts uh, to run it. And it can go down to eight below zero, freeze anything hard as a rock. I mean, it's it's awesome. So this thing here is like under 20 pounds. And 
like I said, I can charge it with a solar panel, I can charge it with an electrical plug, and then I have the generator in the back of the truck to charge it, but it doesn't go down. It's going to be good for a few, even using it with a generator, I'm going to see how it goes. I'll take my plug, uh, I'll see how it goes as far as how much power it will hold besides just using it to charge my phone, powering the refrigerator. But remember, when I'm driving, the refrigerator will go into the truck plug, not into that. I'll be saving that. I got it all, folks. I got it all. I got it all worked out. And when I'm all done, I return everything. <laughs> oh, the coffee smells good. This is that. Uh, let me show you. This is that good stuff. The Barris. I learned how to say it correctly. Uh, Barris Brothers. And it's the Highlander Grog. <sighs> yeah. That's good coffee. Now, what else have I got to tell you? RV living, living on Social Security, not having to go to a prison job, at least this morning or <clears throat> up to four days a week, and you got these skill sets, you become a helper. Uh, you find somebody that does those things that needs an extra pair of hands on certain jobs. Make yourself available. Make yourself known. <clears throat> A friend of mine um, passed away recently, and some people came by that were interested in buying some of the things he had because they were going to sell um, these things that you know were no longer needed because he passed away. And one guy that that came about, he first thing he said was, "I do this, I do that, and I do the other," and everybody he meets. And he repeated it a couple of times. And he wasn't pushing or anything. He was just letting people know. You have to let people know what he does and what he can do. And so now I know. And if somebody else needs something, he gave me his card. I say, I got this guy right here. He says he can do that. And he was wanting work. He wants to show up. You know, here in South Florida today, you call a, <clears throat> from what I hear from uh, most homeowners now, is these uh, these handymen, these plumbers, these other people, these whatever handy people, are prima donnas. They're cherry picking. They only want the highest paying, the highest bidder, and there's so many people moving here, and you put a call out, and they're like, yeah, I'll be there, and they don't even show up. They don't even call you. It's really a bad problem down here. I've heard it many, many times, many times. So when someone says, I need the work, I can do that kind of work, and I will show up and do the work, and I'll do it at a good price, you know, fair price. That's who you need to know. You need to know things. You need to know people. So this guy, what I'm trying to say is, because he's a hustler, and he can do stuff, stuff that I can't do, and he's got equipment, he's got a truck, he's got a lawnmower, he's got tools, and he, he promotes himself. That's how you do it, folks. And he's working for himself. He's not having to worry that he doesn't have money. He's got plenty. You know, he's got plenty of people calling him. And then the people that hire him, they let somebody else know. It's all word of mouth. You can build a business like that, especially here in South Florida, if anybody knows you're willing to work. So don't worry about going to a prison job. Don't worry that you've got to be a greeter at Walmart. Don't, if you have a skill set, and people talk about sometimes, oh, who wants to work in their 70s? Well, you know what, folks? Maybe you're going to make a lot of money doing these side hustles with your Social Security and enjoying your life that you're not spending every penny of it. You're saving and, you know, investing. And maybe, <clears throat> like myself, um, you'll find an opportunity for somewhere, a mobile home, a a villa, a condo, or something that you can buy at a good price. And it'll be a place that you can eventually, you know, go into in your later years. And it will be a place, I just use it as a term, that you can die at. You know, it's not a flipper. It's not an investment. You don't care if it goes up or down. It's just a place for you to have. You know, some people, they've been living in a place for 50 years. 
You know, not everything is about, oh, it might go up in value and I'm going to make some money. Why? It's only money if you sell it. It's, it's unrealized unless you're flipping stuff. But anyway, I digress. This is why I promote get your Social Security at 62. You're still young. You're still active. You're still vibrant. You can afford now to uh, do what you want to do. Get out there and golf, travel, visit, hang out at the beach, work on your tan, go fishing, spend time with your grandchildren, go see people you haven't seen, see America. I mean, the list is endless. And the list becomes big when you, when you start doing it because you're like, hey, this isn't so bad. I like this. People don't know about it because they haven't, they've been programmed to go to a prison job every day. And that's all they've done their whole life. Work, 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 work. Waiting for a weekend or waiting for every other weekend, some people. Or one week a year vacation. What kind of life is that? You paid your dues. You paid into your Social Security. The money is available. Why would you want to delay one day? Why would you walk by and see a $20 bill on the ground and not pick it up and say to yourself, eh, you know, maybe tomorrow it might be a 50 when tomorrow may not even come. You know, live your life, folks. Get out there and crush it.